this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build a simple uh, map integration uh, with Arnic 2. Uh, so this is using Google Maps. And we're also going to use the, the geolocation plugin. Uh, so it centers uh, the map on the user's uh, current location. Uh, so you're actually looking at my current location now, more or less. Um, but uh, for anybody on the internet who wants to hunt me down, I'm not going to be here for much longer anyway. So uh, that probably doesn't matter. Uh, so you'll be able to have a look around the map, add some markers, um, which essentially just uh, adds the marker at wherever the current center uh, of the screen is. Okay, so let's get into building it. Okay, so first we're going to generate a new Ionic 2 application using Ionic uh, Start. We're going to call this uh, Ionic Maps. We're going to use the blank template and we have to make sure to supply the V2 flag uh, to make sure that it's uh, using Ionic 2 rather than Ionic 1. Uh, keep in mind this may change in the future when Ionic 2 is actually fully released. Um, but yeah, for more information on that and if you haven't got Ionic 2 set up on your machine yet, uh, check out uh, the links in the description. So I'll run that and I'll be back in a second. Okay, that's done generating now. So I'm just going to change my directory. No, I'm not. I'm going to search in Google. Okay, I'm going to change my directory to um, Ionic Maps and then I'm going to run uh, Ionic Setup uh, SAS because we will be using um, some styling in this application to make the map work, so we've got to set that up first. Okay, now SAS is all uh, ready to use. Now let's run Ionic Serve to take a look at our application. And there we go, there's our blank uh, Arnic 2 application. Uh, so now I'm just going to open up uh, the project folder and start poking around in the code. Okay, I've got the project open now and you can see the default home component that's set up here. Uh, so we're just going to rename that to map and rename uh, both of these uh, files to map as well. So we'll have our map.html template and our JavaScript file as well, which will define our class. Okay, so uh, we can leave that as it is, um, but we want to change the template URL in here to point to uh, the map folder now. And let's also change this to be called uh, map page. And we'll also need to change that in app.js. Um, so rather than importing the home component, we want to import the map page from the map folder. Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm not going to go over how the navigation and such works so much, all this code here. Um, if you want more information on all that, uh, I'd recommend checking out my last video tutorial, uh, which was how to build a to-do list application in Ionic 2, uh, which gives you more of a uh, well-rounded uh, intro to Ionic 2. Uh, also make sure to change this root component to a map page. This sets our, our default page and obviously we want that to be uh, the map page component. Uh, so I'll save that. And now we're going to start uh, building our uh, template uh, for the map. Uh, so it's going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, we're going to use this ion navbar again. Um, as I mentioned in the last tutorial, essentially this supplies the configuration to um, the ion nav here. So we want to give it a title of um, map. And we also want to supply uh, some, a, well, one button. Um, that's going to be in the secondary position. So that's going to put up uh, the button on the right side of the navbar. And as I mentioned before, uh, that's just for iOS. For different platforms, uh, the secondary position will be wherever that is normal uh, for that platform. So we'll add a button with a click handler called add marker. Uh, which will allow us to um, add a marker to the center of the screen uh, when we actually create that function. And we'll add another icon here called icon add. 
and a bit of text so they know what they're doing. Okay, and we're going to delete this card as well and we're just going to replace it with a div that's going to hold our map. And so we'll write some JavaScript soon that will um, insert the map into this location. So if I refresh that, it looks like we've got an error or something here. I think that's because I was changing uh, the components around before. Uh, but if I run Ionic serve again, we will close that. There we go, now it works. So we have our add marker button and just a blank page. Uh, so now we're going to jump into our class here and we're gonna start um, uh, we'll start off with we're gonna load Google Maps and insert that uh, into that div area there. So we're gonna work on our constructor function here. Uh, so we wanna keep a reference to the map because uh, we wanna add markers to it and info windows and stuff like that. So uh, we're going to set it to null for now and then we're going to load it in by calling the load map function. And of course we're going to have to define that here now. So create a new function called load map. And we're going to use the uh, geolocation uh, plugin now. So uh, if you use this in the browser it will still work because there's a HTML5 API for geolocation. Uh, but if you're running on a device, you can also install uh, the GPS, uh, the geolocation plugin uh, for more accurate readings. Uh, so we have to import geolocation from uh, Ionic. Uh, so they uh, provide some sort of interfaces to use uh, a few of the plugins. Uh, geolocation is one of those, um, similar to how NG Cordova worked, uh, if you're familiar with that in Ionic 1. So we could just use the um, geolocation plugin directly, but Arnic makes it uh, a lot easier for us. So we'll define some options for the geolocation. Uh, we'll set timeout to 10,000 and enable high accuracy to true. And now we want to uh, make a call to geolocation to get the, uh, the current uh, position of the user. So we'll do geolocation uh, dot get current position, pass in the options we created, and then uh, we'll use a promise, which will return uh, the position, and that'll provide us with the latitude and longitude of wherever the user currently is. And so we'll, we'll use that to create a lat, lat long, uh, which is a thing Google Maps uses um, to define uh, a few things, but we're going to use it to define where uh, the center of the map should be. Uh, so we'll do new Google dot maps dot lat long, and we use the coordinates we just got from the geolocation plugin to create that. And the longitude. Okay. And now we're going to pass that. Uh, into a map options object here. So we're going to set the center to that latitude and longitude. We're going to set the zoom level to 15 and we're going to set the map type ID to google.maps.maptypeid.roadmap. Um, so you can also use something like the satellite as well, which will give you all the, uh, the satellite imagery uh, on the map. And we also need to run this.map equals new google.maps.map. Then we want to grab that uh, map div that we created in our template and say that's where we want to create this map. And we want to pass in the map options. So that will create a, uh, a new Google map uh, for us in that div. Um, before we do that though, um, there's a couple of things we need to do actually. Uh, one is to actually include the Google Maps JavaScript uh, SDK. Uh, so we're just going to drop that into uh, index.html here and I've got, uh, I've got it over here so I can just copy and paste it. 
Um, so that will import the, uh, uh, the Google Maps JavaScript SDK. Um, and you can also supply an API key in here as well um, to allow you to make more calls to the API and uh, some other things. But uh, just for testing, you can leave the API key out and just add this code in here. Uh, so that will allow us to, to load the uh, Google Maps JavaScript SDK, um, but it's still not going to work. Um, as you can see, there's nothing happening over here right now. And the reason for that is because we need to add a little bit of styling to make it uh, display correctly there. Uh, so we're going to add some uh, classes to our uh, app.scss file now. And this is why we set up um, SAS before. So you want to change the scroll to have a height of 100% uh, and we're also going to need to add a width and height to our map container. So we're going to set both of those to 100%. So if I save that, okay, I've already made my first error in this tutorial. Um, misspelled position here. I want to change that and if I save it again, hopefully it'll work now. Okay, there we go. So now we've got the, the Google map here. We can drag it around. Uh, we've got the add marker button, but that doesn't do anything yet because we haven't created that function. Uh, you can zoom out, zoom in. You can even do street view if you want it as well. Uh, so now we're going to add that um, add marker uh, function. Okay, so let's create a new function in our map.js called add marker. And we're gonna create a new marker using let, uh, so let marker equal new google.maps.marker. I am doing awful at typing today. Uh, we're gonna set the map to this.map and that's why we wanted to keep a reference to that uh, before. Uh, we'll use an animation for the marker. So we use the google.maps dot animation dot drop which will make the marker drop in from the top and we'll set the position of the marker to this dot map dot get center so wherever the center of the map currently is on the screen that's where we're going to add the marker and uh, well I'll run that now so we can see if that's working or not Okay, so you can see here, I can scroll around at the marker and the markers get added to the screen. Uh, but another common thing people will want to do with Google Maps is to add a uh, info windows. Uh, so basically we can click on these markers and get a little pop-up that says something. Uh, so let's add some code to do that now. Uh, so I'll just say, uh, let content equal, uh, you set this to be whatever you want. I'm just gonna say, information of course in a real application you probably want to set this dynamically to some value but that will do for this example and then we're going to call another function we're going to create here called uh, add info window and we're going to pass through the marker we just created and the content we want in the info window as well so let's create that add info window function and we're going to create a new info window here by uh, running new google.maps.info window. And then we want to pass in the content to that. So that's what's going to get displayed inside of that info window. And of course, we also want a way to actually um, see that info window. So we want to trigger um, that to open when we click on that specific marker. So we can do google.maps.event.addListener. We're adding it to the marker that we passed in. We're listening for click. And when that happens, we want to open this uh, info window. So we do info window.open, this.map, and the marker. So if I run this now, hopefully that will all work. Okay, so I can add a marker, which that's all still working fine. I click on it 
And no, it doesn't work. Something's wrong. I forgot to pass the marker and content into the info window here. Uh, so we're calling it with marker and content. I need to add those parameters there. Okay, so now if I save that, it should work. Okay, so I can add some markers and then I can click on it. There we go. And the information pops up. Okay, so that's the end of this tutorial. A uh, nice, quick, simple uh, implementation of Google Maps. Uh, the JavaScript SDK for Google Maps is uh, it's pretty good. Um, you can do some fancy stuff with it if you, if you want to, say, have an application where you're going to have uh, thousands and thousands of markers. You can dynamically uh, load those based on where the screen is, or you can even uh, cluster markers together. Um, I have some uh, tutorials on doing that in Ionic 1, uh, which I can uh, link to. I, I might update it for Ionic 2 at some point in the future. Um, so it is quite usable uh, on mobile, the JavaScript SDK, but there is also a native uh, Google Maps plugin, which you can use as well, that actually uses the uh, the native Google Maps SDK rather than uh, the JavaScript SDK. So uh, if you've got a rather complex map application, uh, that uh, might be worth looking into as well. And again, maybe I'll do a tutorial on that in the future. Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you like the video and uh, also check out my, my website. And um, if you want to sign up to my email list, I send out a bunch of uh, free content you can take a look at as well.